स्पीकर इज डॉक्टर कानी मोजी एन बी एन सोमो थैंक यू सर I rise to address this august house for the first time with utmost humility. I would like to express my sincere gratitude and thanks to our beloved DMK president and the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Thiru M K Stalin, for giving me an opportunity to become a member in this august house. With a pride, I wish to say that I belong to the Dravidian stock. I revere the legendary leaders Thandai Periyar, Peraringar Anna. Kalinger M Karunanidhi with whom my grandfather N V Nadrajan worked with my father the late N V N Somu was a minister of state for defense in the union government who died in harness on his way to address forward troops of indian army in 1997 near tawang in arunachal pradesh in a helicopter crash i am indebted to all of them sir as we enter into the third year of covid pandemic we expected the budget 2022-23 would seek to balance short term fiscal needs with structural reforms to support medium term growth however nothing has been done in this regard and the road to recovery is very fragile every households in the country fails to meet both the ends of the monthly balance sheets the only sure thing in this last 3 years is the economic uncertainty now the omicron variant has also renewed the economic uncertainty even without another full scale lockdown substantial fiscal support will be required to keep recovery track month by month but a honorable finance minister is happy to announce schemes and road map for next 5 6 years there is a saying in tamil irpadai vittittu parappadai pidippu pidippadu thagumo the finance minister's action is akin to this the covid pandemic has had 20 crore new new poor people into the system and robbed more than 20 crore people their jobs tourism and hospitality sector was hard hit and the road to recovery is still very bleak but the finance minister is happy to announce scheme for the next decades kura eri koli pidikadavan vaana meri vaigundam ponana i think the finance minister knows the meaning of this proverb sir as a medical professional i would like to emphasize that the covid related medical interventions will still remain a top priority for the foreseeable future the development of medical infrastructure and public awareness by the state governments has reduced the death toll due to covid 19 pandemic unfortunately the patients with other ailments had to bear the heavy burden in the coming years than the estimated fund from last year this year 500 crores of funds have been cut off in this pandemic budget for the health unless the budget allocation for medical care and infrastructure increase to 6% of country's gdp the country may not be in a position to serve its 140 crore population though we are optimistic that covid pandemic would end soon the government has no clue how to tackle if there is any other virus outbreak in the future unless the government gets the right advices of the medical expertise whatever plan by the government is like putting cart before the horses sir last time there are many deaths due to the unavailability of the oxygen i think the pm care fund can set up oxygen plants across the country in all the government hospitals it is very important to protect the health of all citizens from the risk associated with any future pandemic to mitigate these risks the role of health insurance sector becomes a more vital necessitating a collaborating effort to improve health insurance penetration and the development of healthcare facilities across the country one of the largest contributing factors to these high prices is the current 18% gst rate imposed on the health insurance premia the sector has called for a gst rate cut on health insurance premia and granting infrastructure status to healthcare facilities to boost to boost access to quality healthcare but the government is turning a blind eye in this regard in fact there is a need for gst exemption for several life saving medicines equipments and services as per industry reports an estimated 56 crore individuals from lower middle class to upper middle class do not have any health insurance cover and it represents about 40% of india's population apart from the lack of awareness about the importance of health insurance the costs associated with even standard insurance products like arogya sanjeevni is a deterrent with prices ranging between rupees 15000 to rupees 18000 per year for a family of two adults and two children with the senior most members age being 45 sir generally speaking about health is a state subject but we are at present sitting on a health time bomb 
and that health care should be accorded topmost priority. The budgetary allocation from the union government is absolutely inadequate to achieve quality health care for all. Take for example the success story of uh, Tamil Nadu, sir. The pioneering champion of health care in Tamil Nadu is a mercurial leader, Dr. Kalenga, who belove, a beloved leader and chief minister, M.K. Stalin, is following the footsteps of Dr. Kalenga in providing free and good health care for poor in Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is the first state in the country to provide free health care for all needy patients. In Tamil Nadu, any patient can enter any government hospital without even a rupee in the pocket and still get good treatment and health care with required medicine and walk out of the hospital cured absolutely free. Dr. Kalinga is a pioneer champion of free health care and health insurance scheme. He has introduced Kalinga health insurance scheme for all way ahead before the union government could even conceive the thought of it. He was a pioneering champion to introduce the free eye care to remove the backlog of cataract patients in the state. It is only after Kalinga and Ilavasa Kannoli determined in 1972 the union government has able to conceive the idea of national blindness control program and implement it throughout India. So today Tamil Nadu tops in the country in all the medical and healthcare indices, be it in the doctor-patient ratio, hospital beds-patient ratio or hospital PHCs per population. Tamil Nadu has developed a way ahead of other states in the country. This is a remarkable achievement of the Dravidian party rule in Tamil Nadu. While there is an urgency to focus on all the three levels of primary, secondary and tertiary health care, it is imperative that the union government took look towards improving primary health care. The budget 2022-23 is a usual bundle of blatant lies and imaginary empty promises that do not reflect the actual accounts of the government's budgeted expenses and receipts. Instead of setting a stage for the country's actual growth and reform trajectory, the budget plummets the hopes of the people into deep, skinny, stinky gorges. Failed promises and false promises are the regular feature of the budget documents since 2015. There are promises repeated in the union budget speeches from 2015-16 onwards. The classic examples are housing for all by 2020, the double the farmer's income by 22. There are many such like the linking of the peninsula rivers, one crore loan in just 59 minutes for the eligible SME startups, generation of 175 gigawatt renewable energy or green energy by 2022. In 2022, all the promises still remain a distant dream. Sir, the housing for all by 2022 announced in 2015 with the aim to construct over two crore houses for Indians belonging to particular economic sections. In 2022, the finance minister has announced 48,000 crores have been sanctioned for the completion of 80 lakh houses for the eligible beneficiary under the Prime Minister Awas Yojana in rural and urban areas in the year 22 23. At this rate, it may take another five years to achieve the desired results. And by the time the backlog of houses required for the poor urban and rural household may go up to another two crores, this is only a conservative figure. The real numbers may bring more dark spots in this housing for all program. Sir, I'm immensely proud to also say that Dr. Kalinga, who introduced the pioneering scheme of providing Pakka house to the slum dwellers way back in 1970s, and later the distribution of free concrete houses to poor people of the sections of the society, namely the Samathuapuram village housing scheme with 100 houses in each Samathuapuram. There are so far 145 periyar in the name of Samathuapuram in Tamil Nadu. No other leaders have even dared enough to thought of constructing houses for Dalits along with the other communities to promote social equality and uphold social justice in the country. This has also been allotted to the poor transgenders and to the physically disabled. Had the Samathuapuram schemes were replicated throughout India, we could have established a social equality among the people. At least from now on, I, I would like to urge the union government to take a leaf out of Dr. Kalingar and his far-sighted social upliftment program, sir. Sir, ever since the government has imaged the railways in the general budget, its importance has been reduced and the stage is set for the privatization of railways. It took 67 years for the rulers from Jawaharlal Nehru to Manmohan Singh to develop railways into one of the world's largest network and employers. But Honorable Prime Minister will take less time to derail the great Indian railways. The commercial sale of railway routes to private players means dividing the Indian railways into two. One for the rich, elite and affordable and another for the poor, downtrodden, unaffordable people. It will create all the stations into two. One for the rich class and another for the poor class. This will lead to the discrimination like in the colonial times. Are we heading towards such discrimination and division? 
Indian Railway so far has been a symbol of Indian unity and social integration. It is the prime duty of the Union Government to maintain the same levels of unity, integration, communal and social harmony in railways. Sir, a stepmotherly treatment in Tamil Nadu by the Union Government budget stands exposed again. Under the fund allocation for the new railway lines, it has been granted rupees 59, for 11, 59 crore for 11 projects, out of which 10 projects have been allocated only a token amount of rupees 1000. Whereas the Northern Railway gets the highest share across all zones, with rupees 18,926 crores for 14 projects, along with a token amount of rupees 15,000 for 15 other projects. Make in India, make for world, is mantra Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave in his 2020 Independence Day speech. For this vision to be successful, over 6.3 crore MSMEs must be taken on board. Whether the Finance Minister has taken any serious note on it needs an answer. To ease credit and liquidity concerns, the Emergency Credit Line Guarantee Scheme should be expanded further to ensure outreach among smaller enterprises within MSMEs. MSMEs need support to improve production and exports to attain Atham Nibar Bharat or self-reliance in line with Prime Minister's vision. Sir, Tamil Nadu is India, India is Tamil Nadu. When Tamil Nadu progresses, India too shall progress. Tamil Nadu is a champion state in, uh, as far as the socio-economic development is concerned. Whether it is education, employment and economic generation, ec income generation, infrastructure development, wealth creation, enterprises, health infrastructure, social justice and communal harmony, Tamil Nadu stands second to none other in the country. Unfortunately, the centre sometimes deny and jeopardise the rightful share to Tamil Nadu. Even in the 1960s, our great predecessors have said, Vadakku vaalgiradu, terku teigiradu. I strongly believe that the same situation is still continuing. In spite of facing denials of various kinds, Tamil Nadu has remained a pioneering champion in the state, in the country. Thanks to the political renaissance created by our party, DMK, spearheaded by our genius leader, Pera Ringer Anna, sustained by one and only Dr. Kalenga. Now the baton has been handed over to our beloved Chief Minister, M.K. Stalin. The people of Tamil Nadu, especially the poor, downtrodden and oppressed, the religious, the linguistic minorities, feel that they are very much safe in the hands of Muttuvel Karnanadi Stalin, the statesman par excellence. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kanemoji. Now, uh